Hey everybody, BTO Pro here. I uh, wanted to talk briefly about uh, a type of request mechanism that uh, I just kind of stumbled upon the other day in Elms Learning Network. So uh, basically, we've kind of got this, you know, if you're not familiar with Elms Learning Network, it's uh, I've got my network here. So a whole ton of systems. Each one of these buttons relates to a Drupal site. Uh, and then basically what we're doing is kind of uh, through rest, restful calls, we're spidering uh, things across the network and keeping the experience in sync everywhere. Uh, so one of the aspects of that is that a course is means different things to different systems. And so, for example, when I'm in, you know, in this case, I'm in our course, course content system. Uh, let's say I wanted to change the name of this course because, uh, you know, obviously that gobbledygook doesn't mean anything. Go into settings and then the course name. Uh, so this isn't just here. Uh, this is actually, you know, this information is in all of these different places. So we need to come up with a way to get calls across them. So let's call this uh, Sing 100 and cool stuff. And hit save and then we're going to look at picture. So it's going to save. And now if I go to any of these other systems, uh, you'll see that this is propagated. Now these are dr different Drupal sites. We're trying very hard to confuse people, if you will. Uh, this is a different Drupal site. You'll see it's a different domain. And now if I go over to Studio, again, different domain, but that's kept in sync. Uh, so those site name has been updated. The site slogan is what these equate to. And so these have been updated even though I'm somewhere else. So what was going on is um, I started out my call structures like this. So Data would get updated in one place. It would technically have to propagate potentially to 14 different Drupal sites. And so, you know, it's just basically pinpricking a node and changing the title in a lot of them. But what would happen is I would then, so I'd save here, and then I would issue these non-blocking calls using the HTTP URL module uh, to all these places. So I'd basically have to figure out the topology of the network, you know, if you will, and then send it everywhere. Well, the problem uh, is that this, this mechanism, kind of a spidering call, uh, if you will, is going to invoke n plus one load. So it's going to be however many systems are out there plus the system I'm currently operating on. Because if this is non-blocking call structure, it's Apache thread, Apache thread, Apache thread, Apache thread, Apache thread, Apache thread. And these are all out there, you know, at the same time. Now, uh, because of the way Elm's Learning Network works, these systems may all be on the same server. They may be on different servers. Um, don't know. But... Uh, as I was kind of working through this, oh, of course you quit unexpectedly there, GitHub. Uh, I noticed uh, that I could probably I could do something different, and so the different thing that I, I'm starting to transition our call structure to is uh, more of a snake methodology, and so snake uh, will only invoke one plus one uh, load network wide. So what do I mean? Well, what you do is you wherever the update is happening. So in a second ago it was in the course. Uh, you bundle up and know all the places you're going to have to request. I know it's still going to be all these different places. Uh, but then what I do is you assemble that list. Instead of issuing all the calls, you issue the calls to the first person, you know, kind of the next person in line in the array, and then you tell that person, hey, here's your call stack. And so we added a way in to the API to let calls do this type of thing. So this is an example call uh, in which you bundle up everything that we're going to connect to, and then pop off the first one. See there, bucket pop off. So this is gonna then ship the call to just the first uh, other tool. And then it's gonna ship along the snake stack of all the other parts of the snake to call, as well as the course context. So, you know, in some systems that means different things. And so what we end up getting instead from a request methodology standpoint is kind of a, you know, if you think of the stack here as uh, there's seven pictured here. So It'd be, hey, I need to send this message to six other people. Hey, you need to send this message to five other people, four other people, three other people, two other people, one other person, and then done. So the message propagates much more a snake-like manner where each system that's called is then sending another non-blocking call to the next one in line while popping off an item. And by doing this, you reduce the overall load on the network. So again, it doesn't matter if this live somewhere else, or these are, you know, different servers or the same server, it's only ever going to have two Apache threads or requests open at any given time. There's going to be this request open, send the non-blocking call, and then this one closes. This one sends a non-blocking call, closes. So really, after you get the two initial threads open, you only have one open at any time because it sends off the non-blocking call and then returns JSON. Well, 
in HTTP URL and you know non-blocking call structures, I send this message, I never wait for a response. So basically it's call hang up, call hang up, call hang up, call hang up, call hang up. Um, and the net result is you don't notice a difference. Uh, you know, you're gonna go, you're not gonna be able to send the call off, have it propagate uh, in an amount of time that I could then cl click rapidly to one of these systems that I know it hasn't gotten to and, and not have the data be there. Um, even if I did, it would update, you know, within, within a second or so. Um, so I, I can't even can't even notice it when I'm, you know, at least I'm in Vagrant and that's kind of cheating, right? Because it rewrites the calls back into itself, but um, creates kind of this different methodology to be able to request it, still working on getting everything ra uh, routed over to this call structure. Um, for example, that you know, site name didn't update there, but this is named Sync 100. And so we know that that's been updated, but just wanted to share that it's an interesting, um, I thought an interesting methodology, especially you have a lot of systems to request, um, maybe different parts of the same system, uh, you know, they're sharing data and keeping nodes in sync and things like that is a, a different way of shipping that data around without invoking a lot of additional load on yourself.